Shots fired left, right, and you know what? Just everywhere. So honestly, I wasn't even going to react to this situation. I was not going to get involved, but this has literally just broken the internet. And we're talking about names in comedy who I have been a fan of for years, who I have followed, especially within Cat Williams. You guys know I've reacted to Dave Chappelle before. We, we've talked about some of, you know, some of the comedic greats that have shaped my life through the years. And I thought with what's going on with the situation, all the attention on it, I want to dive in more to it. I want to find out what the hell has been said and why the internet has gone crazy. So this right here right now is a snippet from Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp. Let's get into it. And I needed you to know why I came by. Yeah, I need you to tell us why. People know I don't go everywhere. I'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of Legend. an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk to in real life. Okay. Um, I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell. So let me come talk. Um, you have a look, man. Cat Williams has always been a real one. Say what you want about him, but he always keeps it 100 with him. Great product here. And as a fan base, we love the attention that you spend on the guest. We, we love how much work you've done, how well you know them, how prepared you are. The same things that we liked about you in football. <laughs> you brought that on. A Hall of Famer for a reason. Super Bowl champ for a reason. Pretty here. And that's uh, why it resonates. And the reason I had to come is because you made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. I have watched all of these low-brow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight-up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here and lying. It's good. It's getting a little hot in here. you about it? You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? Yeah. You let Ricky <laughs> Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in? <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that... Oh, Cat can't help himself. He's still in entertainer mode. All of America fumbled a bit. I love that word choice, obviously tying into Shannon Sharp. He was shouting out football before. Come on. Where are we going with this one, though? Friday? We bringing Friday into the mix? America fumbled a bit. I don't know the uh, the Smiley interview with Sharp, so you might have to comment below. Let's see what he says. When that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be fr was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now, let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five-foot-five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your <laughs> story your story is the ricky smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a christian fan base he was gonna play the pimp why you no. didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man well i didn't know he, he shouldn't be able you wouldn't let a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats <laughs> ricky smiley can't act because ricky smiley can't I love that analogy right there. You wouldn't let an athlete that's on steroids, who's a cheater, talk about one of the greats coming in here and throwing shade. Tell it. Tell it like it is, Great. Kat. Money Mike, legendary character. Friday, legendary movie. I'm throwing legendary around a lot, but it is in due respect and in due course for good reasons. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. And go watch Cat Williams stand up if you haven't either. Man, it's, oh, 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 he's so funny, man. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man, you stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was... Sir, no one... Why no... He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he... What? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this. It's because... Well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie. But I can tell you this. 
We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Damn. Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth mm. of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility mm. and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy and this comedy involves a rape. This is interesting. Uh, has Cube said anything on this situation? I want to see what Cube says on this. And rape is never no. funny, no matter who no. it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me mm. to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, mm. I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why mm. would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. I mean, it's... Again, you're talking, you're pitting anecdotal evidence up against anecdotal evidence, right? So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. But at the end of the day, if you step back and just use common sense from a situation, I mean, <laughs> Cat Williams is a short, skinny dude, right? He said it himself. Like, simple commonality right there. You are not casting Santa Claus as a short, skinny dude. And especially Cat Williams is just like, charisma his personality everything that he exudes man he is cool too like he he was the fucking pimp all right he was built to play the pimp role he was built for money mike you can't tell me that a team of people who are casting are looking at this dude and go santa claus baby let's get it so what ricky smiley say on his you can't say my lines i wrote them that's how I already, already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That we got ghostwriters. I thought we only dealt with this in hip hop. No, we got ghostwriters in comedy the too. The truth of the matter. He was so egregious. Not now. Then he was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred. Someone better call Quentin Miller. I think Drake is back to writing his own stuff. So uh, Quentin can fill in here. Years. He was so egregious. I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Why would you put that in your put in your contract, Cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. Oh they wow! They good women, and I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. Well, Greyhound, yep, coming through at the station. Uh, Ricky Smiley, there you go. Real quick, we weren't even talking about him, but hey, Tyler Perry, come here. Let me just throw you in front of that buzz. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, Damn. you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So That he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when Not you Cedric asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. 
Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie mm. star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood. Rest in peace of Bernie Mac. They would every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over KB and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know, I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore the way you, you, I mean, we ain't even got- I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you- I wonder what Shannon's thinking right now. Why man. he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach <laughs> sitting over here. Why I'm can't, not a movie can't, star. Can't, can't, can't. What? It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. Mm -hmm. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, mm. and doesn't he's write doing jokes. An album. He did four comedy specials. I mean, big shots fired at Cedric the Entertainer. Wow, he does not write his own material. Again, man, this like I'm I'm having to connect like parallels to the hip hop world, right? Because. We have to deal with this shit all the time. And I hate it because what do you bring to the table as a comedian? What you bring to the table, like your bread and butter and one of your talents as a comedian is the jokes that you write and cultivate. And then obviously your delivery of them, your stage demeanor, your charisma. But, you know, that is that is one of the bread and butters of comedians. And yeah, they'll work with others and they'll work on jokes together and they'll build them up to perfect them. But root ideas come from comedians. So this man is saying... What does Cedric the Entertainer actually bring to the table? Because he's not entertaining singing. He's not entertaining dancing, right? And he's not even helping with the origin stories of his jokes. And then he's saying that he's biting his jokes. And actually, Cedric isn't biting his jokes. That would mean the people that are writing for Cedric are running around, going to comedy clubs, watching Cat Williams shows, biting his stuff. Sing, can't. But see, Cedric said it doesn't line up, so Dance and does it I'd have to see it. Great. Now, now I got to go and see this stuff. I really want to see because he's throwing out a lot. He is firing shots and accusations. But see, a lot of it is obviously anecdotal because he's doing an interview and he's talking. But I would love to go like stand things up side by side and see them now because whoo, 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 this is big. Hey, jokes. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? Oh. They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. You don't think Sam's a good, a good comedian? The world does. My man's back on Wild and Out right now. He's doing the disc battles. Think that, wow. Sir, I have 12 comedy specials. He has fucking Wild West over here. Just shots fired four everywhere. Specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Cat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, huh. no. You wanted to set the record straight. Winners are not allowed. I mean, the thing is, though, you think about like Cedric, right? Like, that's an entertainer that's running into similar circles. Like similar legacies to Cat Williams. So if Cat's saying he's stealing his stuff and then you go see that Cat did it before and Cat's even saying, look, it's it's been televised. So you can go see it. Anybody can go see it and line it up. That's bad. That's real bad. That's the, You can't plead ignorance on that because Cedric is running and seeing Cat perform and, and there's a lot of like tie-ins, right? That's like same group, same type of clique of comedians that are bumping into each other a lot. That's not like some random ass dude in one country writing a joke and then it just so happens that someone else has a similar line like over here and they never like saw it you know there's plausible deniability for that there's a lot less plausible deniability here especially if there's already video evidence of it to allow losers to rewrite history i don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform 
They, mm. If you give the, a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened. It's untrue. And there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing I'm saying. So mm. let me ask you this. What is your relationship with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit here currently? They, for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. Mm. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Like mm. all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Where are the stories? Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Mm. Why would we tell these ridiculous stories? Because it's com competition. You you feel like, well, why comedy, comedy guys can't just get along? Yes. Why, why, why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against? If you were mm. a Denver Bronco, why you don't get along with the Cowboys? Something wrong with you? But I don't disagree. I don't no, dislike no, all the no. Cowboys. Cat, damn, you like this? No, like, that's okay, not. Okay, what comedian do you did like? Did you play against the team? <laughs> yes. I've taken. That's a fair response from Shannon. 46 comedians with me on the road. 46. Okay. I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. Anybody mm. that ever told you differently was a fat Faison liar. There's nobody yeah, you, like you, me in the business. Faison. Bro, I want to use that fat Faison liar. You just called a straight. Faison said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Zero. So Why is he allowed to have conversations about real stand-up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. As a journalist, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't ha harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, come on. Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her and that she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that. That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about mm -hmm. R. Kelly, they mm -hmm. canceled me for these things because mm -hmm. why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where... A lot of people were pissed with his response to R. Kelly. Sorry, that was, that was too far. The line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other. You know, pissing it. No, I'm not. I'm not explaining that one. R. Kelly's a piece of shit. And the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. Mm. All of these uh, big dick. I get that, man. Again, like I'm connecting parallels here to hip hop because it's it's really interesting. Like hearing from someone who's been doing this for a long time, right? This isn't someone who's like new to the game who's got something to prove, right? Cat's got nothing to prove to anyone. In terms of his legacy, his accomplishments, the shit that he's done over all the years, the the grind that he's put in, right? He he has earned it. He he really has. So when someone like this speaks, right, even if you don't agree with him, you got to give them that respect to listen to them and to hear what they're saying. And it's really interesting, like just hearing kind of his perspective on it because he talks about like the competition of comedians, and that's what like a lot of like rap is too. And, and I see it within the realms of hip hop. You know that competitive like team siding nature of things. And then obviously like the integrity of those who write for themselves, who put it in on their own versus those who rely on others to do it for them. Deviance. And then they give you these gimmicks and they give you these images that are all sort of like copied and pasted or borrowed 
from the true originators. It's all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I didn't have no more of these. Amen, <laughs> man. Gee. The truth is the light. Uh, I kind of <clears throat> get on here. Right. After <laughs> that, I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> mm, mm. Right. We good now? Because the people want to know well, why would he get blackballed? Yeah. Oh, because I was ask because that. because in thirty years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing. You will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. It's like Game of Thrones, bro. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't. My boy's like Varys with all his little birds out there telling no him things. stories of doing nobody dirty. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying, that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike. Because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. Mm. I told them to go get the Prowler. I then told them to paint it purple. I told them don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play. <laughs> like, I... I did far too much work for somebody to come years later mm. and try That's to right. tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. That's what I'm saying. I really want to hear what Cube says about straight. this. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's know ever heard. Lie. Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. Mm. And, like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Cap. <laughs> that would have fucked up Goodwill Hunting completely. <laughs> uh, normally, when people are giving you information. But actually, then the world wouldn't have Ben Affleck, really. I mean, the world needs Matt Damon. Ben, I think it's debatable to some people. Just kidding. I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time and they're giving information no one else knows or have ever heard. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was another one. Making three, we got another body. Thousand dollars a show in cash. Oh my God, Steve Harvey now. Doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Like, what are you talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. The, uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made... All lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany mm. was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian? It doesn't stop. It's a slaughter at this point in time. Kevin Hart, welcome. You've just got thrown in front of the Greyhound. Comedy Club, he already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his no. own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never no. heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is?
Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. Kevin Hart is an industry plant. Wow. Wow. I mean, again, I'm connecting back to parallels of like hip hop. Like industry plants happen all the time. And like labels play favorites, right? They find someone, they think that they've got a good image. They'll look good in front of a camera and then they just feed them and build them up. It's like build a robot, right? Like we're going to build a rap star. We're going to build an ice spice. All of a sudden, Drake is going to just shout her out out of nowhere. We're going to talk about her struggle and her come up when there's no documentation of her on the grind, like doing the shows to get to that point, to really get discovered. And then, wow, all of a sudden the whole world's given to them and they've got a whole team helping to write for them, helping to manipulate their image, giving them these opportunities. You see what we're getting at here? Because I'm thinking about Kevin Hart. Like I think about some of the other ones, right? And Kat, like the Dave Chappelle's I've always been a huge fan of. Like you think about like their come-ups, right? And like hearing about them from word of mouth, like friends telling me like, jokes or shit I need to go check out and and you saw their rise and like for me and again this is anecdotal just like cats doing some anecdotal stuff which you know you have to be careful with anecdotal logic like all of this that he's saying like I'm I want to go look into now like I, I want to do some research I want to back up I want to go find facts because that's very important to back up what he's saying but anecdotally it makes sense again because I can't tell you about Kevin Hart before he like blew up like, he, he really just, like, came out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, it's like, this motherfucker's on everything. Like, he is in every movie. He's in all kinds of commercials. Like, he's doing everything. How did this happen like like that? And yeah, he, he does really well. And I don't want to take away from his work, from his grind, from all that that he's put into getting where he's gotten to. But, you know, it does happen within the industry. It does make sense. There are people that, you know, are favorites. And then industry wants to build around them and give them those opportunities and i think where cat probably has a problem is you know cat's someone who really earned it so if he sees someone that just gets to like skip a bunch of steps yeah it's gonna upset him it's gonna piss him people off people don't understand the definitions of these words he just did his documentary with chris rock where he well shit i wonder what kevin said about this shows now. you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the east coast yeah, it was. So yeah, how the Netflix simultaneously special. was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. Mm. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem... That's true, man, because you got to be doing the circuit. Again, like to really get noticed and to come up... Co comedians grind, man. It, it's hard. It is hard gigging. It is hard doing that. And it is virtually impossible to rise on one coast while simultaneously doing it on the other. No, you gotta be in kind of one place or the other, really doing those circuits and those connections and those networks and putting yourself out there. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Huh. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett gonna keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe. The boy who cried wolf. That liars not get to. Camera's gonna die, we'll be right back make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What powerful. do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. Huh. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. Huh. They all do the same job. I like that line. Satan cannot create anything. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he all? He's really got an interesting like perspective in terms of how his mind works and the way that he steps back from situations and looks at them and how he can describe them and communicate his ideas with us. Same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? Hmm. If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal. It's a it's a consortium. They they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you. Listen, man, there's there's politics. It's it's entertainment. There's always politics in the entertainment industry. When you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team, yeah, on paper they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy. 
and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. I'm waiting for him to say hike. Because the man is lining up. Put him up. Put him on the blocks with Shannon. I've got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, I, I was. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out. But he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get there. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room. He is calling out Hollywood right now. I'm here for it. Let's go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. Mm. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? Uh oh. You called Ocean Eleven to get that uh -oh. nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you have ever been on truth. Have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there in real life. <laughs> wow. So no. Wow. Faison's never done his own tour in 30 years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. I was making shotgun noises earlier. My man has got a rocket launcher right now like he's just burning everything every building that he can see in sight right now ricky Smiley. tear down the institutions of comedy Kelly wow he's been playing the same old black woman forever like you can't get a young fan base with that like you got to be doing karaoke around the country to make that work right and he is but I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100 city tour. I'm not gonna have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a Whoa. shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym, but you don't get to bring mm. that body in here talking crazy. Talk about how good you look. What? No, no, there's too many comics out there that I put. I get that, man. I mean, that is, you think about the grind of that, of a live schedule, 100 shows in a year, right? What it takes building that up and putting in that systematically year upon year upon year upon year. And Kat's saying these dudes taking shortcuts and they want to talk like they're the kings of comedy. When they're not putting in that stage, they're not putting in that time to be you know, again, equivalated to to rap, to be true musicians, to be true artists of their industry. They'll, they'll just show up for the big time features and those big time moments, and they'll let that just carry them and ride out from there. Their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay. Let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we'll get some... Huh? I want to protect them real quick, because you had said for the Kings of Comedy, it was in 2018, 2019, but did you mean 1999? Because it came out in 2000, so I just want to make no, it. I didn't, no, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said, I couldn't do stand-up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know, you're talking about Cedric. Joke stealer from Cedric. Cedric. Oh, okay, so you so, said that okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. Okay, no, 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 no. What comes out in 2000? The, the original Kings of Comedy. Right, my... 
I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, right. yeah. So if I yeah. said the dates oh, wrong, just, yeah. Yes. So yes. You, let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You said, yeah. I had Cedric yeah. on here, and I. I mean, it makes sense because there's going to be so many people looking this up now. Ask him about the joke stealing, yeah. and he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your to to that point, you say. Right. So he thought that I was just a no name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done. See, what I want to know, too, is like, all right, th there is more gray area, I guess, and plausible deniability in terms of like if it's just a one liner, if it's a certain joke, then yeah, like creative minds, it, it's not impossible to think that a different mind can come to a similar conclusion right happens all the time it happens in music too but like what i want to know is the bit is he like really taking his bit is there similar mannerisms too like things to really like key you in subconsciously like this dude has seen this guy's act before like it's not just like a one-liner there's like a bit with it there's mannerisms too there's kind of everything that ties in with this over here so you can directly see that influence. And so well on BET's Comic View that they have made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up. It takes about three minutes. Mm. But then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab to help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, mm -hmm. and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. Okay. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did mm. and how much he loves right. the All joke. All right, so we have that. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of right. Comedy. And he's doing it verbatim. He's well, just then, yeah, something does not add up there. Changed my car into a space. If he has physically been there, we have confirmation of that. Cat's done this joke, and then there's a lot of similarities when Cedric drops this joke two years later. Mm. Chip. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times. <laughs> and Kat didn't do, as I stand before you, Shannon, I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> there was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give mm. you a pass if you were just going to lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're all a group, Cedric. Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody okay. knows that. They've okay. been aligned. And and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you stand against them, then they sometimes have a problem. But mm. we don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for, is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Mm. Now, see, obviously, you hear what's going on on the internet. Everybody's talking about Cat Williams. Like people are like, man, have you heard what he's done? He shot off. He popped off here, there, and everywhere. And you know, you hold back your opinions, but going into it, you have your own thoughts. So I'm thinking going into this, like as he's saying these things, like wow, like all right. On one hand, he's firing shots. This is crazy. No wonder this is going off on the internet. But so on the other side of things, it's like, why, why, why is he doing this? Why is he popping off in this way at so many people? And what it sounds like to me is like these other dudes have already gone on the show. So he's annoyed. So he's not the one who's preempting this. Like if you want to say, oh, like he's desperate. He's not doing as well as he used to. So this is a move for clout, right? Like let's say like someone coming out of like fucking left field and dissing Eminem. But what I'm getting and what I'm vibing from here is that, well, if they're coming out and saying something about him, it's because there's that there's that discord. There's obviously discord. 
like he said, there's team siding here and there's this coalition that's really like against him. But like he's only coming on responding to these things, right? If he was preempting all of this, if he's the first one firing these shots, then yeah, it's a different type of story. I get that. But to me, what I'm seeing and what he's saying here, and now I want to go back and check out the other interviews, is like these dudes are like just throwing little jabs, like sly shit on the side, like just dragging him through the mud just a little bit. Little jab over here from this dude, little jab over here from this dude. And he was like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I'm going to get on and I'm going to lay it all out. I'm going to lay it all out there. I'm going to let you guys digest it. And I'm going to walk through the middle of Armageddon after I've dropped bombs everywhere and just appreciate the desolation and destruction. And guess what? Next year, I got another 100 shows I'm going to do. So I'll see you then. <laughs> wow. Cat Williams, Shannon Sharp. You are not so certified. Listen, guys, I hope you liked today's video. Comment down below anything else you want to see me react to. Also, let me know what you think of this situation. Uh, your thoughts on this. I've asked you guys for some more background on stuff. Yeah, just chip in, man. Let's see what the community thinks about this situation. Obviously, it's a different type of video from me, but, you know, we like to step outside the box every once in a while. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay positive. It's only Knoxville. You know, I'll catch you again.